pretty one, Ulysses. Hello booktube, I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Welcome back to my channel. Here I am with another page 112 tag. This one is yet another variation that I'm testing on you. This is the book haul version. Uh, through this tag I'm going to haul three books. I know what they are, you don't, and I've tried doing it the Simon Savage way where I reveal up front what books I'm going to be talking about and reading from uh, and so there's no surprise and I think really from your perspective from what comments i've got i think you prefer to have it kept a surprise until the end even if i myself know from the get-go what the books are so these are books that i've recently bought two of them have come in the mail from book depository one i got at the bookstore and i haven't t told you about them i haven't hauled them and i'm going to haul them via the page 112 tag so let's see how it goes give me some feedback whether you enjoy this new variation or not I don't think I will consistently haul books this way, but occasionally I might. The page 112 tag, very briefly, if you want a longer explanation, please check my show notes. I adapted this from a French literary prize called the page 112 prize, where the jurors evaluate the long list by adjudicating page 112 only on a totally blind basis without knowing who the the author or the, the title of the book is and from that they generate a short list. It's kind of an ingenious way to sample a book and see how much you like it and I always use this method when I'm browsing in a bookstore to decide which books if I only have enough money to buy one book and I've got three that I want which one has the best page 112 so you might want to try that too. So without further ado I'm going to read you page 112. Of course, I know who the author and title is, but I'm not going to comment on that until the end. I'm going to give my subjective response. You will be doing the same. You'll be thinking about your own reaction. And for those of you that like to play along, you might also be trying to guess my reaction. And which one do you think I like the best, second best, and which would be my least favorite of the three? Okay, if you want to do that. Otherwise, really, the point of it is, which of these books would you be more likely to pick up now that you've heard page 112? Here is book number one. It was a smoky voice, dark and slightly slurred. I see now, at the distance of a lifetime, that she must have been drunk. I, I'm just going up. Oh? Do you live here? Yeah, well... No, I'm just... My brain had been completely overtaken by my eyes, which were so busy absorbing every single pleat of her glistening negligee and the rough skin of her throat that it could no longer hear or control my vocal cords. The woman wore a small gold chain around her thick ankle, and her toenails were varnished in gaudy red. Her hair was glaringly blonde, a magnificent lion's mane, a wig, no doubt. Through her alcoholic haze, she must have sensed how insecure I was, pale and breathless. Do you know someone in this building? Uh, no. The bell rang, and downstairs the voices and shouts of children could be heard from the other side of the door. Would you like to come in? Yes. It was dark inside the apartment. The long corridor was dimly lit by wall lamps, giving off a faint yellow light that brought out the green of the dark wallpaper. Cautiously I entered, passing the woman as if I were scraping past the side of a mountain. The cliffs of her breasts loomed above, and an odorous mist filled my senses with a mixture of exclusive German perfume, Danish sweat, and soiled sheets perhaps even the hint of aftershave. Her stomach protruded slightly, and my eyes followed the belt of her gown like a sheep trail along these great slopes. Then she closed the door and walked ahead of me down the corridor to the sound of the floorboards, as mystical as an elf woman, but heavy as a mare. Can I get you something? Some cola? All right, well, what did you think of that? I liked it. I am very curious about what's going on here. 
This is obviously a first meeting, and it sounds like very much of a chance meeting. Who is the narrator? Male or female? But the narrator has just kind of crossed paths with this woman outside the apartment building and gets invited in and accepts the invitation rather audaciously but cautiously at the same time. What's going on here? I have to admit I, I'm not in love with the writing. With a few exceptions. It's not horrible, but it's not what's grabbing me. I like a few things. I can't decide how much I like passing the woman as if I were scraping past the side of a mountain. Uh, it's vivid. Not quite sure about, about the writing, but curious about what's going on here. And obviously it's being reflected upon a lifetime later, so it's of some moment as Anthony Trollope would have phrased it. Yeah, maybe that's all my reaction to, to book number one for now. Book number two. Fresh, fragrant night air flowed in. Moonlight illuminated us. My mother was sleeping on her left, her face turned to the window. She slept calmly. I sat across from her on a small stool. Her face was covered with freckles, like mine. In the winter they had faded somewhat, but were still visible. She had a high forehead on which tiny wrinkles were slowly forming. Once in a while she used to place her hand on my forehead and say, Never look surprised, never frown. But she herself frowned often. Her nose was fine and narrow with a small hump. Her eyebrows and lashes were dark brown, her ears small and close to her head, with small lobes. Now and then she opened her mouth and quietly snored for a while in her sleep. My mother's face looked almost beautiful. Fear, so often another occupant of this room, had disappeared. There was just silence, the fresh night air and the moonlight, and my mother's face. I sat for a brief while, then left for my own bed. It was hard to fall asleep. I went straight into a dream. I was standing by my own wardrobe. The large oval mirror should have shown me full length, but I could only see half of me. My hands were crossed over my chest. At first I seemed to see my grandmother. I had her face, her prominent cheekbones, humped nose, grey eyes, and high forehead. Then the image in the mirror changed, and I saw myself as my mother, her eyes closed, asleep. And then I saw myself with a slightly glowing skin, as if taken from a greetings card, but nonetheless, myself. I love that. That was beautiful. Almost made me cry. I don't know why. I guess because I know the background of the story a bit, then you don't. But I, I, I found that really powerful and moving to use physical description to tell so much beneath the surface of this story. Really Beautiful writing. Fear, so often another occupant of this room had disappeared. And just the physical description and all all that is conveyed by it. And even the, and the dream. I hate dreams in fiction and I thought that was powerful and evocative. So the narrator seems like an adult child of this woman. Not a young child, but I could be wrong. And there's something ominous that is maybe at an end. And there's a bit of a peaceful, but not quite peaceful, <laughs> ambiance hanging over the room as she watches her mother sleep. Just fascinating. And I think the prose, this is one of my favorite verbs when talking about writing, I think the prose sings. Really love that. That's book number two. And this is book number three. I'm not only going to finish the sentence that spills over onto the top of page 113, but I'm going to give you one more sentence from that page. Fem Patel's staff was young, and from their offices in a former candy factory in Seattle, they wrote about and organized around issues like queer rights, trans rights, and reproductive justice. Bloomer tried, too, but while the editorial staff was pretty diverse, and diversity was among the topics frequently covered, there was a formal, slightly uneasy quality to the magazine. It hadn't made a graceful leap forward. 
Even its website was slightly grainy and sleepy. Bloomer's offices were now located in a small commercial building in the far west thirties. As Greer walked down the narrow hall, she could hear the whinny of the dental drill behind the door of Dr. L. Ragney, DDS. Across the hall, she buzzed at the doors of Bloomer, but no one answered, so she stood waiting. She coughed, as if that might help, and watched as someone approached Dr. L. Ragney's door and was buzzed in at once. It was a bright spring workday in New York City, and for whatever reason, no one was answering the door at Bloomer. Greer turned the knob, but the door was locked. Then she banged, but still no one appeared. She was confused, but more than that, the lack of response made her realize how much she really wanted a job there, and that if she didn't get one, she would be very disappointed. Faith Frank had seemed to offer something unusual in the gray light of a ladies' room three and a half years earlier. So now Greer stood for too long, knocking on a door in this hall of dental offices and actuaries and startups. She knew there were people behind the bloomer door. She could hear them moving around and talking. It was like when you heard mice behind your wall but couldn't find a way to get to them. That past Wednesday, Greer had nervously called the number on Faith Frank's business card, which had spent all of college in a slot in her wallet. During the occasional wallet purges that took place during times of great boredom, the card had always made the cut. Whenever she'd seen it, she'd remembered the night it had been given to her, and she would feel a specific, excited, and highly alert feeling. Okay, well, I really like that one, too. That's a very different style than what I just read. I would say the prose here is very breezy, but extremely appealing and competent. I liked it. This one feels very modern, with references to websites and trans rights and queer rights. And this is not set in 1970. Again, a very innocuous scene of somebody going for a job interview and knocking on a door and waiting. But the momentousness of it is much like page 112 of book number one. You can really feel like this, there's something important about to happen. Makes more sense when you're going for a job interview. You can, you can really feel it. It was like when you heard mice behind your wall but couldn't find a way to get to them. There's a tactile vividness of we've all cleaned out our wallets and what do we decide to keep and just the what all that gets conveyed in that very concrete image. I, I think it's really great writing. All right, so what do you think my picks will be for my first pick, second pick, and third? third pick. Book number two, the one about the woman watching her mother sleep, that is definitely hands down my first pick in terms of on the basis of page 112 only. I thought it was just stunning writing and just pulled me right into the story. That's my favorite. My second most favorite is book number three that I just read from. I thought it was also really, really good and breezy really great writing and I'm very curious about the story. I assume she's going to get a job there because this seems like it's a momentous occasion but who knows where it's going from there. And a little bit of a distant third would be the first book. I didn't think the prose was as good as I was expecting. It was a few exceptions but I was certainly interested in the story and curious to see where things might go next or what this was all about. So now I'm going to tell you what the books are, and then I'll finish by telling you a little bit more about the books. I will reveal them in the order in which I have ranked them, okay? My first pick, which was book number two, is Soviet Milk by Nora Extina. Camel, of What Camel Reads, has done a wonderful review of this, and I've talked about this on my eclectic playlist, and around that time is when I ordered it from book depository and I've had it in my hot little hands for a couple weeks now. It's from Pyrene Press, translated by Margita Gailaitis. And what a wonderful job she did of translating, because that prose, I think, is powerful. So that's my first pick. Brita Bowler and I are doing a buddy read of this in May. Really looking forward to it all the more now. My second pick 
is a new release that a few of you probably recognize, because I know a few of you have just recently read this. Meg Wallitzer's new novel, The Female Persuasion. This came out in Tokyo a week before it came out in America. For some reasons, I got it on its release day in Tokyo. And isn't it a gorgeous book? And third pick is a novel translated from the Icelandic, The Woman at a Thousand Degrees by Halgrimur Helgeson, translated by Brian Fitzgibbon. Love the cover. Beautiful, big hardcover. And this was published this year. Uh, my friend Jenny, who has the podcast Reading Envy, uh, featured this book on a recent episode. She read from page one, and I have to say, page one was much better than page 112. And even though I didn't like page 112 nearly as much as I did the other two books, it was fine. Page one was much better. So that's the whole thing about the page 112 technique is authors and editors spend an incredible amount of time on the opening scene, the first paragraph, the first 50 pages, and then everybody kind of slacks off. So, a little disappointed. I'm guessing on the basis of this, page 112, this would be a maximum of a four-star read with the possibility of being a three-star read. And once, to be honest, once I realize a book is going to be a three-star read, I bail. So, it could be a bail. And I'm hoping, try to remain optimistic, because if you're so moved, go listen to Jenny talk about and read from it. She loved the book, and that opening scene was wonderful. Hey, so I didn't actually tell you anything about the books. <laughs> so this is an addendum. So you'll notice maybe the lighting's a little different and I've maybe had one or two drinks. It's late, much later in the evening after a hard day at the office. Soviet Milk is a new translation from Perine Press. I said that before, but it's newly published in 2018. And this is a book out of Latvia and it concerns the brutal effects of the Soviet era of Latvia's history and how this one woman, the central character, I believe that, I'm no, I don't know for sure, but I think it's the woman that we are observing sleeping while her daughter's watching her. According to the back cover, I'm not going to read it to you, she wanted to be a doctor, but the authorities wouldn't let her, and they actually destroyed the relationship she had with her daughter. So it sounds really tough, brutal, and of course, from this passage, really moving so so that's soviet milk by nora extina my second pick the female persuasion by meg wolitzer this is a book about a woman's very personal journey through american feminism greer who we met in that excerpt she's a college freshman and she crosses paths with this woman that we also hear about on page 112 faith frank and who's an older feminist and becomes her mentor and she has a lifetime of involvement in the feminist movement. Now that sounds like a really tricky novel to pull off. Writing about somebody's involvement in a political movement and making it gripping fiction, but based on some early reviews, once again, it seems like Meg Wolitzer has pulled it off and I can't wait to find out for myself. And the Icelandic novel by Halgrimur Helgeson, The Woman at a Thousand Degrees. The protagonist is an 80-year-old, Hera Bjornsson, who lives alone in her garage waiting to die. And that sounds really bleak, but the opening paragraph is kind of a scream. And she's reflecting back on her life. She was born into a prominent political family in Iceland. Her father aligned himself with Hitler. So she's reflecting back on her life. I certainly will be trying this. So I can't uh, just give a prediction about my rating on this book solely from its page 112. I'm also taking into account having read and loved her previous novel, The Interestings. That was a five-star read for me. I'm predicting this will also be a five-star read for me. And this could end up being a six-star read for me because just on the basis of how much I loved the pros on page 112. All right, so do you agree with my rankings? Would you have chosen a different favorite? And what? Tell me why. Give me your feedback. You, none of you are shy to disagree with me, so that's wonderful. Which one would you be most likely to read based on page 112? So that is my debut of a new variation on the page 112 tag, the book haul version. Thanks for watching.